Hello everyone. Uh, today's presentation will be on ground grid design made simple. Some engineers may refer to this type of grounding also as um, ground mat. Um, it, um, for a lot of you, you may have seen this at substations, uh, for example. This would be like your ground mat on a substation. However, today's presentation uh, will focus, yes, on, um, on, on uh, standard commercial and industrial type uh, uh, ground grids or ground mats. However, more and more we uh, have users that are using this utility, this tool, for ground grids on renewable sites. So let's go ahead and get started with uh, today's presentation. And uh, for the agenda today, we have, we're going to be go covering the following. We're going to cover the IEEE ground grid standards um, that apply to, to this utility. We're going to go over a grounding mat geometry and size and how to define that in, in the program. We're going to go over integrated fault analysis tool, which is very important because um, engineers can now perform the single line to ground fault um, taken from uh, straight from the, uh, ETAP from the report and populate that as the input information for uh, for this calculation, for the step and, and touch potential calculation. So it's very important. Everything is integrated into one database. There is no need to swap between different interfaces or even you know go into a third party program. We're going to also go over how to accurate um, how, how to do an accurate and economical ground grid design. OK, so for the objectives, as uh, all of you know, protecting life from the danger of electric shock is essentially our objective for this type of analysis. Uh, another objective would also be to isolate faults as soon as possible by providing a low impedance path to ground in order to activate your protection, such as uh, maybe like overcurrent um, grounding protection. So. Let's begin by going over some of the uh, essential terminology that we're going to continue using for the rest of the presentation. Let's start with uh, step potential. Uh, that is, is, and actually uh, there is also a, um, a schematics uh, that I'm going to to go over um, after this. Uh, after I go over this uh, uh, slide. So step potential, we're going to continue referring to that over and over, but that's essentially the open circuit foot to foot voltage during a ground fault. Um, think of someone taking a step. Um, touch potential, the open circuit hand, hand to foot voltage during a ground fault. And mesh potential, which is a maximum touch voltage experience while standing within a mesh of a ground grid and touching a grounding object. So we have um, specific limits for this that are going to be that that are coming from IEEE 80 standard, and the software fully meets those requirements. Um, I want to show this uh, particular illustration just so that we can get an idea of um, in pictures what a step potential is uh, referred to. There is the touch potential, and there's also the uh, the mesh voltage. So. Let's continue on with uh, terminology. So um, ground current, it is the current that enters a grounding system. Uh, we're going to also be talking about ground potential rise, or GPR. That is the voltage between a grounding system and a remote earth during a ground fault. And we'll talk about remote earth, which is a potential reference point sufficient, sufficiently distant from the fault to experience the negligible potential rise. All right. Um, so a ground grid or ground mat, as some engineers may refer to, is a mesh system of buried conductors used to provide contact with the underlying earth. Uh, the grounding rods are um, ground rods that are vertical rods used to facilitate the conduction of a fault current from the ground grid to a deeper soil layer in the underlying earth. So uh, on the right hand side you could see there is a, um, a, a small illustration of the ground rods in red and then the ground grid uh, in black. Uh, let's talk a little bit regarding why grounding modeling is important. 
Uh, number one, it predicts performance before construction. Uh, essentially, uh, the ground grid uh, module that ETAP uh, provides is specifically the modeling tool uh, that will allow you to perform the following. It allows, uh, allows optimizing the use of copper, so you could be more efficient on the number of rods and the number of conductors. In fact, there is a, um, uh, there is a utility within the ground grid systems to, to provide for optimization of uh, ground um, rods, cost, and um, uh, conductors. Usually it's less expensive than testing, so performing this type of uh, simulations uh, on, a, on a software like ETAP will be a lot less expensive than actual uh, performing actual testing. And also results can easily be rechecked. So if something um, needs to um, change uh, during the design, you could just quickly update the numbers and then recalculate. All right, so let's talk about um, IEEE standard 80 and 665. It is essentially an em empirical method. Um, it is limited in shapes, um, only with vertical and horizontal conductors. The, uh, the limited shapes, rectangle or square, you have rod arrangements that are not flexible, so everything has to be yeah, uniform. That being said, there is also a finite element method that is supported in, uh, in ground grid systems in the module, which allows for any grid shapes. Uh, it also allows for multiple interconnected ground grids. Um, the rod location model flexibility, so they don't have to be equally spaced or uniform. And also, it provides for a graphical potential profile, so you could actually, in three-dimensional graph, the step and touch potential uh, graphs. Okay, the ground grid design procedure. So um, we're we're um, we're gonna we're gonna bring up the uh, the software, but it's important to understand <coughs> what the uh, what the ground grid design procedure is. So soil resistivity measurements and analysis. Uh, we're gonna go over how that is captured in the field, recorded, uh, and how that's uh, brought back to the office and entered into a, a modeling into uh, into the modeling tool uh, such as ground grid systems. Grid design, uh, conductors and rods, um, how to assign uh, monetary value and the type of uh, material uh, for, for, the, uh, for the conductors as well as the rods. Ground fault current calculations, so we won't get into the specifics of how to perform a single line to ground, but we will go over on how, um, uh, how to take the single line to ground value from uh, the short circuit study report and calculations and the results analysis. So pretty much the output report that you would hand over along with uh, your deliverables. Okay, uh, the most common um, soil model is going to be the two layer. Um, yes, there are perhaps other uh, less common uh, models that would um, provide for three or four uh, layers. But by far, the two-layer soil, soil model is the most, um, uh, it's the most widely used one. Um, just as a quick reference, on the bottom right, I have provided um, average resistivity in ohms per meter for different types of earth. Um, in the ground grid systems module within ETAP, you're actually um, uh, you're actually able to specify um, from a typical values pull-down menu what the top layer, what the lower layer is. However, you can also uh, do a, um, a calculated or a user defined using the winner four-point survey technique. So uh, let's um, briefly go over how this technique is, uh, is used. So for a ground grid soil analysis, the measurements are uh, very common on uh, surveys, um, uh, like for example, soil surveys. The Wenner four pin method is almost like an industry standard. Uh, probe distance and soil resistivity. So this is part of you know the probe distance and, and also the soil resistivity will be part of the report. Um, the, the um, the program will calculate resistivity at each probe uh, distance 
you then calculate the top lower layer resistivity and top layer depth. So this is all part of ETAP 19 uh, enhancements. And I'm going to show you here um, a screen capture from the soil editor page. This is um, under the analysis tab. So as you could tell, you bring from the field or from your survey report, your probe distance. There's a probe distance column. There's the measure resistivity column in ohms per meter. And ETAP um, automatically provides the calculated resistivity uh, value on the right hand side, along with a percent error. So as you could see from the, from the uh, graph on the right hand side, each one of these uh, triangle points is essentially your measure resistivity uh, uh, taken from the field report, or the soil report. On, on the bottom, um, we have the probe distance in feet. And then over on this side, we have the measure points calculated curve resistivity. Um, as you could see, uh, it will automatically calculate the uh, top layer um, resistivity as well as the lower layer. So for uh, ground grid design, uh, rules um, area should be as large as possible. Uh, properly arranged conductors and rods. Um, use bare R and or insulated conductors, and those could be modeled in the in the program in ETAP. Um, also, the l the length of rods will be important. Uh, and again, we're when, once we go into doing the simulation, I'm going to go over on when where to specify all of this information. For uh, ground currents, uh, line to ground fault from the connected bus. Um, and also the line to ground fault from the connected line. Again, these um, uh, line to ground fault values can automatically be taken from the short circuit study case results. If you happen to have the, um, th the rest of the electrical uh, network model on the same single line diagram, um, but uh, you can also enter them by hand. So if you have, for example, a report, that already has those values, then you can really enter that um, for, uh, by hand. Okay, and uh, let's briefly go over the ground grip optimization. Uh, the objective is to, um, to minimize cost while maintaining safety on the step and touch potential levels. The constraints are to meet the step and touch voltage limits. Um, you have the ability to optimize based on adding conductors only, or you can optimize uh, based on adding conductors and rods. So uh, what I like to do now is I am going to uh, bring up a um, the ETAP uh, uh, the, the ETAP program. Uh, within the ETAP program, uh, you have a toolbar on the left hand side. And one of the modules is uh, the ground grid systems. So what I have here is the ground grid system main window. In fact, here let me let me uh, maximize this. And then uh, so this is your this is your um, your home window for ground grid. This is uh, uh, on the top left. You have, for example, your three dimensional view. So you can actually look at it kind of like um, uh, from from left from right. You could rotate it so you could get to see all the corners. Okay. Uh, over on the right hand side, you have your uh, um, two soil model. So you have the top soil. When you double click on it, this is where you would specify the, the, the type of top layer uh, that you have. These are just typical top and lower layer uh, materials. And you also have the ability um, to. Uh, come in with your probe, the distance versus, versus the, the measure um, resistivity uh, values that you take from the field, uh, bring them in and calculate the resistivity. Um, again, we kind of briefly went over that uh, on one of the uh, slides. All right, now uh, on the bottom you have your uh, bird's eye view. So this is essentially looking at, you know, at, at the grid st uh, straight from the top. 
Um, this is where you could specify your conductors, the rods, the the shape of the of the ground grid. Um, one of the items that I would like to do is uh, let me bring up the following. This is uh, very common on renewable um, on renewable sites. So what we were looking at is just a ground grid for maybe like a, a typical substation perhaps. But this right here is it's a very large, very comprehensive network of grids. They're all connected to each other, right? Uh, so this is the these are the type of um, this would be the type of ground grids that are also supported um, by ground grid systems in ETAP. So you could see here you have the you have the three-dimensional view. You could see the the whole entire site. This is probably like a like a 40 kilometer by by 20 kilometer uh, site. It's huge. Um, but for the purposes of uh, this um, presentation, um, we're gonna go ahead and um, and use the following uh, example. So um, you have your conductors right here. I'm selecting various conductors. Um, when you double click on the conductor, you get the properties and you also get the, the rods, which are these, these points right here. And um, once you begin performing your design, uh, you could quickly switch to the results by running the ground grid calculation. Running the ground grid calculations will give us the step and touch potential. And if there are any um, dangerous conditions, so if, if we, for example, violate or do not meet the, um, the, the, the safe um, uh, step and touch potential, you would get a warning like this. Um, it says, uh, the maximum touch voltage exceeds the tolerable limits. Okay, um, so usually, usually um, we could usually go back to the design tool, like I have right here, select, for example, conductor, and then add more conductors or rod to the system. So I have, I have um, a conductor that goes from this end of the site to this other end. And if I double click on it, I could see here the length right here. So this, the length here is 50, almost 56 feet. And also you get to specify the type of conductor that it is. This one happens to be just uh, copper soft drawn, but you have the ability to, to specify from steel, aluminum, copper clad, so on. You also get to specify the size right here. So in this particular case, it is a 4 aught, And you could also get to specify whether it is insulated or bare. In this particular case, uh, we're using all bare. And then the cost per um, uh, on the rods or also on the conductors. The cost is very very um, important um, value here because when we perform the optimization, um, you know, cost is one of the constraints as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK here. <coughs> Let me verify now um, my step and touch potential results. So I'm gonna click on ground grid connections using, you know, the the newly added um, conductor. That goes ac across the uh, from from uh, from on this site, <coughs> and um, sure enough, I no longer have any alarms or warnings, so I'm with within the um, the step and touch potential safe limits at this point. So um, you can also perform once once you have the. Uh, you know, once you perform this uh, this calculation, you can also plot your touch or step potential or absolute power in a three-dimensional view like this, so that you could scroll through the through the whole entire site and look at the voltage profiles that way. All right, so it could be rotated as well. Okay. Um, the other part of the deliverables that is very uh, very important would be, for example, the in the report manager, 
uh, you could select the complete report in PDF format and um, I'll show you um, I'll show you what the report looks like here we go okay so it provides you with the system data uh, short circuit uh, current values, the fault duration in seconds, the soil data um, uh, information, your uh, upper and lower uh, uh, soil layers. It provides you with the ma material uh, constants, so the type of conductor and rod that you're using, the um, uh, the cost associated with with it as well. Here's all the conductor data. Here's all the rod data. And then you have your total cost right here. So uh, total number of conductors, the total length, and then the cost associated with that. For, for the rods, you get the total number of rods, the total uh, uh, length uh, for, for the rods, and then the total cost. And you get your grand total um, displayed like that. And then, uh, of course, you get your step and touch potentials, your uh, ground resistive uh, resistance in ohms, or your RG value, as well as your ground potential rise or GPR. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and close out of this report. And um, just um, quickly, I want to open the, um, the study case editor. This right here is where you would specify, for example, the um, uh, the ground short circuit current. Um, right now we have this set to user specified right here. So this is our single line to ground. Um, however, you can also select short circuit study and you would automatically get that from the uh, from the short circuit study report. Again, that's if you have the the system model um, as part of the, the same project. If not, it's very common that perhaps you're only the scope of work only calls for you to do a ground grid, which in that case you may not want to model the entire site. So uh, just make sure you have handy a short circuit report so that you could specify the single line to ground um, uh, value at this location. Okay. Uh, I would like to go over now the uh, optimization, uh, the optimization tool, and for that I'd like to use. Okay. Uh, now, using this particular project, uh, what I would like to uh, uh, to go over is we have this L-shaped ground grid. Uh, we could see um, on the top left. Uh, we can rotate it from the three-dimensional view, so we can go to the left, to the right. Um, the the soil, um, the top soil, the, the lower soil layer is displayed on the right-hand side. So we could see, for example, that um, uh, for the surface material we have clean limestone, and then for the both the top and the lower layer we happen to have uh, um, moist soil. Here is the uh, bird's eye view of the site uh, where we have actually it is 50 feet by 25 feet in uh, the grid size we have four conductors on the x direction and we have four conductors on the y direction the the depth for the uh, uh, for the the conductor is 1.5 feet the size of the conductors is uh, 4 out and then the type of conductor here is copper clad steel um, with a cost associated uh, there on dollars per, per feet. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is if I wanted to run, for example, a simulation uh, to figure out what the whether the step and touch potential <coughs> limits are safe or not, um, for this particular setup, uh, uh, the maximum touch and voltage exceeds the, toler the, the tolerable limits. So no, this would not be a, um, a, a design that would be safe. Um, however, we can actually perform an optimization right here on top 
uh, for number one, you could, could optimize based on conductors, or we can also optimize based on conductors and rods. So that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to click on optimize um, based on conductor and rods. And the first thing that you'll notice is number one, we don't have any alarms or warnings, which means that our step and touch potential uh, are safe. We, we're within the, uh, uh, the safe safety limits. And al also what you're going to see is on the left hand side, now we have uh, seven conductors on the X direction and seven conductors on the Y direction, um, where it was originally four. And uh, we can also take a look at the complete PDF report. As you notice, you can also uh, export this into uh, Excel or um, Word or other formats. So we can see here the total length of the conductors is 550 feet. This is part of the deliverables. Uh, this would be on the report. The total length of the ground rods is 40 feet. All right. And then we have our uh, system data. So we have the uh, short circuit current, the single line to ground uh, values, the fault duration. We also have, for example, the, the soil data. This would be like your uh, surface material, upper layer, lower layer. Uh, we have the material constants here. So uh, essentially the conductor and the rod uh, material. You have the rod data, total, total number of uh, rods, the grid configuration, the length, so essentially, you know, uh, you know the, uh, the length and width, uh, the total uh, uh, length and width, and you have the total cost as well. Um, you could see the number of conductors and the number ro of rods associated with, with that. And most importantly, on the last <coughs> page, we're going to have our uh, calculated values. So we have, for example, our ground potential rise, or GPR. We have our ground resistance, or RG. And then the touch and step potential um, uh, calculated values. So in conclusion, ETAP's ground grid module has been optimized to quickly handle very large sites, such as um, what you may encounter in the large renewable uh, projects. Uh, also, the IEEE method and finite, ele finite element methods are supported, where uh, your IEEE method would be more with regular shaped, like uh, square or rectangle uh, type of grids. The finite element method would allow you to uh, essentially uh, model any shape grid as well as connect them um, to other grids. And um, also in conclusion, the soil analysis, the the Wenner uh, four pin survey uh, technique. And uh, thank you very much for paying attention.